Good evening. My name is Kacper Paradowski and you are watching Poland Daily News. Poland's capital city witnessed yet another mass protest. The national women's strike took to the streets of Warsaw yesterday and the participants of the march were reluctant to speak to the media. Reporters of TV Republika witnessed acts of aggression and hostility. Although the organizers of the march push the blame of brutalizing social life onto others, they themselves are seen as adding fuel to the fire. On one side, the activists of the women's strike speak of police aggression during their demonstration, but on the other, they are aggressive towards journalists. I only want to ask you a few questions. Can you promise me to ignore the Law and Justice Party agents and also those dressed up as journalists? Can you tell them to f*** off? They all pretend to be journalists. This, however, was not the end. Today the protesters did not allow our reporters to enter the press conference, despite the fact they had been invited. You have nothing to wait for. You're only blocking the entrance. We will not let you in anyway. We asked politicians of the left who support the women's strike what they think about this type of behavior. I don't know why activists of the women's strike have this kind of attitude towards the media. Anyone can record what they are saying during the protests. The protests which are now taking place are just a sign of people being pissed off by the decision of the Constitutional Tribunal. I don't want to comment on that. It was no one from my political camp, so I won't defend either side. I believe it's important to speak with the media, to provide them with a coherent message. It should also be respected. I won't deny that. Yesterday's protest was to block the building of the same, the lower chamber of parliament. However, due to the police blockade, the protesters marched in front of the building of the Polish television. The community of the women's strike accused the law enforcement of being too violent against the participants of the demonstration. Tear gas was used against them. Some of the officers blended in with the crowd in civilian clothes and armed with expandable batons. The spokesman for the police explained that they had no other choice than to use such force. The organizers of leftist manifestations are vulgar and aggressive. They openly encourage people to wage war and revolution as well as to attack others. Then they act surprised when their actions bear consequences. However, activists of the women's strike believe that it was the police that first crossed the line. I have no doubts that aggression is also present on the women's side. They are clearly provoking others to be aggressive. Attorney Nikodem Bernaciak says that freedom to gather is a value connected with responsibility for one's words and actions. The organizers of pro-choice demonstrations should bear moral responsibility for the content of their speeches and acts of violence committed by the protesters. Following yesterday's events, the police apprehended more than 20 demonstrators. 13 of them are to face charges. The latest data published by the Ministry of Health clearly shows that the epidemiological situation in the country is worsening day by day. The last 24 hours brought about a new record number of deaths due to COVID-19. Today, the Ministry of Health reported nearly 24,000 new coronavirus infections. 637 patients died due to the disease. This is the highest number of deaths since the beginning of the epidemic. In total, almost 797,000 people in our country have been infected with the disease and over 12,000 died due to COVID-19. New information has surfaced concerning those awaiting a coronavirus vaccine. The latest studies for the COVID-19 vaccine are being conducted by American company Pfizer. The product is to be released on the market later this year. We have, of course, to wait uh, to wait uh, um, uh, for for authorization and approval. Yeah, if uh, if everything goes well, we could start to to uh, to supply the vaccines to Europe and the United States in the second half of December. Protests against the U.S. election results continue. Supporters of the incumbent President Donald Trump demand a recount of votes in states such as Georgia, where it is believed election inconsistencies could have occurred. 
Stop the steal. These were the words chanted by Donald Trump's supporters in front of the Georgia State Capitol in Atlanta. Packages of uncounted votes cast in the presidential election were found in the state on two occasions, totaling over 5,000 previously unaccounted for ballots. So it's their duty as our representatives to call a special session and to go in and investigate. And we know the Democrats don't want that because it'll prove the fraud just like everywhere else. This is a major moment. And you guys are literal vanguard. And Georgia is, is a key battleground state in all of this. You're going to need Georgia. You're going to need probably Pennsylvania and Arizona is the clearest path, I think, to 270. So they're trying to shut it down all right here. And people should remember that it's the Republican Party that's doing this to us. It's not the Democrats. In a sense, it's the Democrats because they frauded the election. But we expect that from them. Georgia's chief election commissioner, Gabriel Sterling, emphasized that a group of investigators will address all allegations of electoral fraud, but stated that there was no evidence that the recounting of votes would affect the outcome of elections in the state. What is your response to President Trump's claims that uh, there are thousands of fraudulent votes in Georgia? Uh, that he's been misinformed on that front, and the reason for the audit is to make sure that every legal vote is counted. President Donald Trump's electoral staff has requested a recount of votes in two counties in Wisconsin. State authorities have already received funds to cover the cost of recounting the votes. The incumbent president is entitled to do so because the difference in votes in the state is between 1 and 0.25%. Look at this in Wisconsin. A day after the election, Biden received a dump of 143,379 votes at 3.42 a.m. when they learned he was losing badly. This is unbelievable. Joe Biden, on the other hand, is confident he won the race. At a recent online conference with healthcare professionals, the president-elect claimed Donald Trump's administration is responsible for delaying the COVID-19 program due to the extension of the counting process. We should be further along. One of the problems that we're having now is the failure of the administration to recognize. The law says that the General Services Administration has a person who recognizes who the winner is. State-level certification of the voting results should be completed in mid-December. That is all for tonight. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for Poland Daily Business. Good night.